Hello, my name is Mark Strand, one of the investigators in the 1RX program. Today I would like to share with you a presentation on the rollout of the 1RX program in North Dakota and how to evaluate the impact of that rollout using the REA model. We're well aware that many opioid overdose deaths started with a prescription opioid including individuals who went on to have heroin dependence, many of them had an opioid prescription as the starting point. We also know that primary prevention of opioid use disorders can rely on providers and pharmacists who care for their patients receiving opioids as a way of preventing them from starting down the pathway of opioid misuse. The 1RX program was established with just this goal in mind in order to use a standardized community pharmacy-based patient screening approach to improve population health with regard to opioid use. I'd like to talk about three uh, brief uh, priorities in this presentation. The first is to explain the challenges of upscaling a local intervention to a regional or state level. Many different interventions are done in community pharmacies under limited uh, scale conditions, and many pilot projects have been proven effective. But it's much more difficult to implement such a program on a statewide or even regional or national level. And furthermore, evaluating the effectiveness of this rollout is even harder. The 1RX program chose to sub, uh, undergo an implementation evaluation project using what's called the REAIM model, which is a comprehensive approach to determining the population level impact of a community-based intervention. So first I'd like to uh, talk about the 1RX process for patient care. So every patient coming into 1RX pharmacies will bring their uh, prescription to the pharmacist at which point the pharmacist will have them undergo two different screenings. The first is the use of the ORT or the opioid risk tool to evaluate the risk of them perhaps being at higher risk to experience opioid misuse. The second is to screen them for the risk of accidental overdose. I won't go into detail, but these two screening tools have been described in other 1RX publications and other presentations on our webpage. So I'll just move on to say that the result of those screenings leads to the decision about which interventions to provide those patients in the community pharmacy, including the six shown on the right, partial fills, introducing the medication take back program, prescribing naloxone, referring them to community support services, uh, referral to community support services, as well as consulting with them about the risks of opioid misuse. So the 1RX program had a statewide rollout that was accomplished through a couple of main methods. Uh, first was the project preparation phase where we used a media campaign, including a, a formal uh, launch of the program uh, in, in allowing the community and even the whole state to learn about it. We implemented a beta test site at uh, a couple of local pharmacies. Um, and we also developed a pharmacy reimbursement structure to increase the incentives in the phase of the preparation. And the second rollout had to do with the implementation where we first provided training to 281 uh, pharmacists, either in person or online. We provided an onboarding welcome packet to the uh, pharmacies. We then provided liaison support and even did monthly coaching calls and a newsletter in order to help with that implementation. So these were preparation and implementation phases in order to set the stage for wide scale uptake across the state. This resulted in 74 North Dakota pharmacies enrolling in 1RX and 47 of those going on to become active. Now imagine if all 195 pharmacies in the state were to adopt, implement, and use uh, with high fidelity the 1RX model with all their patients, that would be considered optimal or the highest possible population impact. But as you know, 
it's seldom that way as certain pharmacies don't uh, have the time to implement it or they don't yet see the value that it might bring or they consider it to be an, uh, an impediment to the routine workflow that they are already doing. So what we want to do is we want to know how much of, of the optimum did we actually accomplish and that's where the re-aim model comes into play. So the second uh, objective in this presentation is to describe the value of the re-aim model to guide and evaluate upscaling of interventions. There's an increased appreciation in healthcare for population health improvements in addition to individual patient level improvements. We know there's good evidence for the efficacy of individual level treatments. For example, insulin works to control blood glucose in diabetic patients who take it. But imagine a world where population level blood glucose was completely managed. This would require all diabetic patients being diagnosed, all those who are diagnosed receive care, all those who are cared for can afford their medication and take it consistently, all the clinics who provide care to diabetics participate in caring for the patients in this way, all the clinics then follow evidence-based guidelines for their care, and they all do this consistently and sustain it into the indefinite future. Now, it's hard, I mean, we know that it's never going to be this perfect, but that would be the optimal population health approach to managing diabetes. Now, what the re model does is it evaluates, uh, it assesses the public health impact of a given intervention, uh, comparing the public health impact of an intervention across organizations and over time, or it might compare two or more interventions across different dimensions in order to improve the effectiveness of the program. This tool has been used to address lots of healthcare, uh, health needs and health priorities, and we've decided to apply it to the 1RX program. So there are five domains in the REAIM model, uh, exemplified by the acronym REAIM, REACH, Efficacy, Adoption, Implementation, and Maintenance. REACH represents how many of those patients who are candidates for the program are actually reached in those settings where you're doing the program. The goal in our pro project was 90%. The efficacy is how effective is the intervention at delivering to the patients what you intend to deliver. So in 1RX, that meant individual patients who have an ORT score of greater than or equal to eight, um, or who are at risk for accidental uh, overdose, receive one or more of the six critical interventions. And our goal was for 60% of the patients to uh, who are eligible to receive those services, knowing that it's unlikely that this will be done perfectly with every patient every time. The next uh, domain is the adoption domain. Now the first two, reach and efficacy, have to do with how the program works on an individual patient level. The last three, adoption, implementation, and maintenance, have to do with how the uh, intervention operates at the organizational level. So adoption would be the pharmacies who enroll in the 1RX program. That is the proportion of those who are invited, how many actually enroll. And our target was 25%. Implementation is then those pharmacies who adopt the program or enroll in the program, how many of them go on to actually implement the program with high fidelity. And we define that as they at least get uh, through five patient screenings. Um, and our goal was for 80% of those who adopt the program to go on and implement it. And then finally, maintenance is defined by the pharmacies who implemented the 1RX program have still done at least one screening three months after adoption, meaning if they're doing any, then they're still doing it. And our target there was also 80%. So that was an introduction to the re model and how it's used and why it's important in determining population health outcomes. The final uh, pro uh, program, final part to this presentation has to do with um, then explaining the success and failures of 1RX through the domains of the re model. So um, these are the targets that I showed you in a table form previously. So our expectation was that the uh, pharmacies would reach, you know, those patients who were eligible, 90% would, would actually be delivered the program. 60% uh, of those who were found to be at risk would be delivered the various services. They're going to take more time, so we thought that would be a little lower. 
we had a target of 25% of all the pharmacies in the state adopting the program. And then we assumed that if they adopted it, 80% would go on to implement it. In other words, if they've chosen to en uh, en enroll, they're probably going to go on to actually do it. And then we assumed that 80% of those would actually also go on to maintain it over time. A um, couple of definitions. Efficacy in this program is defined as those patients who had an ORT score of greater than or equal to eight um, receiving one or more of these six critical interventions. Now, this is already over 5,000 patients in our program. Um, everyone gets a medication take back introduction and, uh, and opioid prescription partial fill um, uh, opportunities. And so these programs have been delivered in addition to those two required, these are based on uh, risk stratification of the patients. Um, turns out 4.5% of our patients have an ORT score of greater than or equal to eight, and 19.1% have a risk of accidental overdose. So that's a uh, definition of efficacy. And here's what that looks like, where uh, you can see in the columns, individuals who were identified as ORT of greater than or equal to eight or risk of accidental overdose, 97.1% of them, or 299 out of 308 individuals, received any of the six interventions. Similarly, or in contrast, those individuals who are defined as at lower risk, only 40% received those interventions. So this tells us that we're delivering the interventions to those who need them most, and in the contrast, we're not spending time to deliver interventions to patients who truly do not have that risk. So now in terms of the results, our performance, you know, here you'll see the numerator and denominator values that were used to perform these estimates. Now, the, um, the numbers have increased, you know, since then, but this is what it was like at the time uh, that this analysis was done. And it turns out that only 16.9% of patients who were eligible for the screening received the screening. So that was an area of, of interest as we began to try and explore why that might be. It included that the pharmacist didn't have time. And here you can see those comparisons in, in, a, in a bar graph format. So in summary, many interventions can be delivered in one or two locations or in a pilot program and have high effectiveness. But to actually upscale those and roll it out at the statewide level is much more difficult. And yet it's really necessary if you're going to have not only an impact on a few patients in a couple of pharmacies, but if you're going to have a genuine impact on the entire health of the population of the people of North Dakota receiving opioid prescriptions. So I hope this program, this has given you a chance to see not only how the OneRx program works, but also how you can evaluate your program very rigorously in order to determine how effective or how how big your impact is in comparison to the potential impact that you might be able to have. We're very excited about what we've accomplished and also we're very open to evaluating ourselves and holding ourselves up to a high standard in hopes that we can continue to improve our performance in the 1RX program. I'd like to thank our donors, the North Dakota Department of Human Services and others who have helped fund this program. Thank you.